HL7 standards define a way to structure medical data so that it can be sent from one party to the other. It is based around events that trigger the creation of a message and its transfer to another actor. The standard defines many different types of messages and describes the information that they must contain. The message types are grouped into general teams. Patient administration, for instance, will include all messages managing the information of patients visiting an institution. Order entry will contain messages about clinical, laboratory or pharmacy orders. Other teams include financial management, medical reports or the scheduling of appointments. Every HL7 message is organized into segments. Segments always begin with a tree code letter indicating the type of the segment. The rest of the segment contains all the different data fields and the segment always ends with a carriage return. The first segment will always be the MSH or message header. The message header contains information which is necessary to know how to interpret the rest of the message. Then we have the special character used for separating the data fields, which will generally be the pipe symbol or the vertical line. Then we have the other special characters which will be used for separating subfields. Next, we have information about the sending application, then many other fields, including a field containing the message type. In this case, for instance, the ADT A01 corresponds to an admission message for a patient into a medical institution. The HL7 standard defines for each type of message which segments are mandatory or optional, and for each segment, which data fields they must contain and in which order. Let's take as an example this sample HL7 message. If we want to interpret this message, the first thing we should do is look at the message type. In this case, SIU S12. In the documentation, we can find that the SIU message type corresponds to schedule information messages and that the S12 event is a notification of a new appointment. We can then look at the different segments and put them in relation with the documentation. You can see that in addition to the message header, we have a segment for the schedule activity, which will contain information about when and where the appointment will take place. We then have some notes and comments, the patient identification, patient visits, then information about the resources. The documentation also contains the details for each segment of the information it will contain. For instance, let's look at the patient identification segment. The table contains the order in which the data field must appear. It also contains the data type. Many of those types have themselves a detailed definition in the of the subfields they must contain. For instance, if we look at the XPN data type, we'll find all the different parts of a name. The standard is very detailed and tries to be as exhaustive as possible. There are also often examples which sometimes make things a bit clearer. As we can imagine, it is very impractical to write or decipher HL7 v2 messages manually. They are still widely used in the medical industry, however, and remain a standard that an engineer in the medical field need to be familiar with. We'll always try to deal with them with appropriate software, such as the one we'll develop in the next video.